Don't miss London Real. Subscribe now. This week, London Real meets UFC fighter Dan Hardy. I'm not an athlete. I'm a fighter that's trying to be a martial artist. His wins and his losses. That's it. I'm done. I'm not enjoying it anymore. This is not fun for me anymore. Um, I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm just getting damaged. He talks the spirit world. The thing is, like ayahuasca doesn't necessarily do anything to change the person. It just helps the person understand who they are. And introduces the wolf heart. They, they want to feed the wires in into my heart so they can measure the second heartbeat. So they can then burn it. London Real presents... Dan Hardy, uncut. Every subject's on the table, so feel free to ask away. All right, let's talk psychedelics a little bit. Okay. We, uh, about two weeks ago, we re released an episode um, called DMT Before and After, and we basically mm. filmed here with myself and an ayahuasca filmmaker our thoughts on DMT. We went and smoked DMT. We came back and told people what happened. And then I, about a week later, I released a, a training video of me training with um, an MMA fighter named Peter Irving, just me kicking pads yeah, and stuff. And, yeah. and, and somebody tweeted, they're like, wait a second, you do psychedelics and then you want to beat the living shit out of something? And, and uh, I was like, yeah, they, they go hand in hand, in my mm. opinion. But could, can you explain why you wanted to go uh, uh, drink ayahuasca? And then after you drank ayahuasca, you went back into the cage and got another win. <laughs> and can you explain that to people? Is that... Is, is there something strange there or is that? Um, I, it's, diffi it's difficult. It's very difficult to explain ayahuasca to someone that's never, that's never like had, that, had a psychedelic experience. I mean, how, how do you explain psychedelia? It's, it's out there. <laughs> but the thing is, like, ayahuasca doesn't necessarily do anything to change the person. It just helps the person understand who they are so they can make the changes themselves. So, like, I'm... I still like fighting. I still, I still feel aggressive and get angry. And you know, the, the psychedelic experiences have not changed that. They just help me understand it and 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 help me distinguish between that cross chatter between the different parts of my brain, where you know, you know, the reptilian brain's going, yeah, go and hit him, hit him. He deserves it. And, I, and my higher consciousness is like, no, no, come on, no one's gonna like that. That's the stupid thing to do, and everyone's gonna be upset, and you're gonna look like the asshole. And, you know, so so like now I under, now I can hear this cross chatter and I can choose which one's the best. Whereas before, everything was was fighting. It was all fighting, and they were the decisions that I was making without thinking about it. So so all all that the all that uh, the the ayahuasca ceremonies did was was just help me connect with the different parts of my personality and help me understand what each part needs. You know, what what do what do I need to do to feed reptile, and what what is my higher consciousness need to going to need to like to level up again to keep keep evolving and you talked about you want to get more in touch with the reptilian mm. part of your brain because you i think you even said when you're in a fight and you're in your reptilian brain is the perfect thing you mm. know almost like you said no mind earlier yeah. in that tom cruise movie and yeah and do you want and do you think psychedelics or meditation is a way to get there further no doubt no doubt yeah i uh th there, there are there are different different ways of uh, of doing it obviously but um like for, for me, psilocybin is is one of the most one of the most powerful and useful tools for that kind of thing. Because and Terence McKenna talks a lot about about how the integration of psilocybin into the diet affected uh, people's edge and depth perception, so they were, you know, more able to to survive and hunt. And this is part of the stone date theory. And, and exactly, have, yeah. I'm just curious: have you ever trained on low doses? And have you ever noticed that? I have. Okay, I have. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. We, um, and I'm I, I'm. Every subject's on the table, so feel free to ask away. Um, and and I, have a, I have an interest in actually trying it during a fight. I would like a gram, a gram and a half to see the difference. Oh. But then again, that might be an unfair advantage. You never is know. It, is, it legal? is it illegal? I'm sure it's not on the banned list. I'm sure it's not on the banned list. I'm sure it's not on the list. Because no one, I bet they wouldn't even know what it was. 
I mean, they just think you were crazy for doing that. I think it's, it's like, fascinating. Whatever. I mean, does I, it affect does it affect like your respiratory system or your heart rate or anything no, like that? No, not at all. I um I had a psilocybin experience a few months ago, and I remember looking at my iPhone because I was playing music, and it was all of a sudden in HD, and yeah. it was in the first thirty minutes, and I noticed all the little details. Yeah. And I was like, that's what Terrence is talking about. Yeah. Low dose makes you a better hunter. Uh -huh. Medium dose, you don't think about hunting anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's a fine line. And high dose, heroic dose. Yeah, five is, grams. Yeah, that's that's. That's is that why it's known as heroic dose? Heroic yeah. dose, yeah. yeah. So Terence McKenna's theory is um, uh, high doses vary infrequently, and I completely agree with him. So if it's psilocybin, five grams dried, go really big, learn about yourself, apply that maybe in your life for the next six months, as opposed to let's take some mushrooms and go to a rock concert. Mm. Now, not that I have anything wrong with that, but also Terence says do it at your house alone in the dark, and I kind of agree with that mm. too. Um, of course, ayahuasca is kind of a corollary on that because you're mm -hmm. doing it with a shaman in a group yep. in the jungle. Do, so you have experience with both. Is there one you prefer or do you find one slightly different? I find ayahuasca to be more avatar for me. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like more about the community and, and how I love that. So that's and a feel. heroic dose then? I mean, ayahuasca is always a heroic yeah, dose. Yeah. You're yeah. usually given enough where you're going to go there. But I just find I'm, I'm more of like Mother Earth and community and psilocybin. Yeah. I still have parts of that, but I, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm interviewing you. No, what, no, no. What are your experiences when those two? There's no diet with psilocybin either. So. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean there shouldn't be. Okay. You know? Um, w with ayahuasca, that's, it, it's, much, it's, much more, it's much less of a frequent thing, I think. Um, I've had six ceremonies now um three of which were in peru um and and they the each one's very very different but i i put i prefer i prefer psilocybin i prefer it if if i'm honest because because i'm i'm much more of a solitary person i like to ha i like to have a, a a powerful experience like that on my own where i've where i've got got a hold of the of the of the, the circumstance that i'm in and I mean, we, like we we did a ceremony a little while back, and there was a guy in the corner that had a bottle of water, and it was one of those those like like shitty plastic bottles that's not got any yeah. any structure. It's and he had one cracking. of those, yeah. And he had the wrapper on it, and like and just that, like four hours into the ceremony, he reached over to grab it, and like as he's undoing it, not even thinking about it, he's undoing it to take a drink. The the crackling and rustling immediately just like yeah, brought pulled me back away to from where I was at, you know, and and so. The, 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 to a certain extent, there is a benefit in having that in those ceremonies because it also brings up other things that you need to assess. You need to, I mean, like I've done, I did a ceremony recently with 32 people. Wow. And it was, I mean, there were, there were like families there and it was awesome. And it was such a cool environment. First time I've, I've, I've had a, a day ceremony as well. Really? Because usually they're at night indoors. This was daytime outside. Um, in what country? Uh, I, I'd rather not say. I didn't I even mean. know they did day <laughs> ceremonies. I, I yeah. just assumed it was always nighttime. So. Yeah. Do you did you do you feel a group energy? I've never yeah. done it in groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. do. You feel like uh -huh. a collective. Yeah. Okay. And, and and different different groups and different environments are very are very uh, very unique as well. Like my my experiences in Peru were um, that was that was that was much more of a solitary experience because I had space. We were in quite a big. It was a big wooden building called a malocca. Um, and we were effectively, the, most of it was net, so we were effectively right outside anyway. Um, and it was in the jungle, it was silent apart from all the wildlife, and, and I had plenty of space. And in Peru, obviously it's very accessible, so they just give you a, a mug full, and you just drink and drink and drink, and, and then there's a second dose if you want it, and a third dose, and they really, they really push the envelope in Peru. Whereas uh, here it's a little bit more of a, okay, have a shot and see how you go, okay. you know? Um, but, but they're different, and the medicine's different every time as well, depending on who's made it, and, and I mean, there must be so many different things that change it. But for me, like with, with the psilocybin, I, I, can, I can spend a weekend with psilocybin and have just, just a power weekend, just feel like I've, I've leveled up. It's like a video game. I've just jumped a level because like my whole weekend becomes about the ceremony, and I don't wake up. See, this is the thing with the party thing. Like, th there are circumstances, like, I'll go hiking. I'll have a, a grandma or two and go hiking and just, you know, take my, take my shoes off and stand in the water and just touch the leaves and just, just be connected, be, you know, be grounded. And it's very, very good for that. It helps me appreciate what I don't see right in front of my face sometimes. Whereas with the heroic dose, that's, I have it, like, 11, 11.30 at night, um, and it, then it's, so it's coming on at, like, like 
12 30 or one o'clock and i have my music set up and i've got my crystals and my candles and my joints rolled and i'm ready to go and i've got everything i need um so then for the first like you know two or three hours i'm i'm not present anyway I'm, yeah you know and then as it starts to start to come out i have a little routine i like to you know I, I, first thing i do when i when i kind of i'm starting to connect with my my space again i'm starting to become more conscious how I'll sit up, I'll kneel, and I'll sit in front of a mirror. And this is where I start working on this connection with reptile thing. Because the weird thing is, when I look at myself in the mirror during one of these ceremonies, I don't, I don't recognize myself as such. I, I, I understand that this is the body that I'm in, but I don't really feel like I have any, any necessary ownership over it. It's just the vessel that's helping me experience this life. So I don't see myself, I don't recognize myself until I look right into the black in my eyes. And then it's like, oh, there I am. It's really weird, and I can't. I don't. I get it now. I get it now because I've experienced it altered. Um, but before, I, I'd never. I look at myself, and I can look at my house. My hand is my hand, and you know, and I recognise myself. But it, but with with those situations, it's very different. Because your ego um, is so dissolved. Yeah, okay. and and you so and because you're so you, you're so aware of of all the other all the other the extremities of the reality that we're in as well. <laughs> I, don't think be, I can't think of a better way of explaining that. But. And this is an experience you can repeat, kind yeah. of, uh, which uh -huh. is uh, unlike ayahuasca, it's more of a crapshoot. Yeah. You don't know who's around you, but when you're at home with psilocybin, yep. this is a kind of a pattern you can kind uh -huh. of... Uh, and, you and, can, and, and I, can, I, can, I can focus my intention. I can, and Terence McKenna really helps with the setup of it as well. Um, so, so like... Like my day, like before, before, so I, and I always, I always select the day. I would never wake up on the day and be like, okay, I'm gonna, I've got nothing to do today. I'm gonna eat, eat some mushrooms. I, I like to plan it out. So I, I make sure I've got the weekend clear and that there's gonna be nobody bugging me. And, you know, and I wake up on this, on the Saturday morning and I'll have, I do like a Bikram yoga session or I'll, I'll run. I like to get a good sweat and a good workout. So my body feels very open and very clean. And then I'll have two small vegan meals, just something snack, something light. Uh, and then I'll fast for four or five hours and then have them at about 11 o'clock. Um, and then, so by one or two o'clock, I'm right where I need to be. Three or four o'clock, I'm sitting in front of the mirror, smoking a joint, like thinking about the things that I've experienced. And, and marijuana, they go hand in hand. And I know a lot of people talk about ayahuasca and marijuana being very separate. And I, I don't necessarily feel the same, okay. which we can talk about as well. Um, but yeah, the, the, but there's this, this kind of this, this kind of a process, and then I, then I start to feel hunger, hungry, and then it's Brazil nuts and bananas. That's my that's my, my post post ceremony snack. But at this, I'm still very much in it. I mean, yeah. after a heroic dose, you feel it for six, seven, eight hours. Um, but um, I've got my I've got Pink Floyd on, or uh, my girlfriend Lacey's got me into Future Primitive recently. And if if you've not heard Future Primitive, it's just it's DMT music. It's amazing. Okay. Um, What's a heroic dose for you? Five, five's good. Okay. Five's good. I've tried more, but it didn't really, it didn't really uh, enhance it in any way. It's interesting how you talk about the low dose on your hikes, because when you take a big dose, it's just so much information mm. that you can't, you're not really mm. in the present anymore for a couple of hours. Yeah. So you can't appreciate the little things. Yeah. I, yeah. I play Terrence when I'm coming back down, and, okay. I, and I, I, I play the same Terrence track I've listened to ten times, and I hear completely different things. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's just my little ritual. Yeah. See, I like uh, Pink Floyd was was made for psilocybin, in my opinion. I mean, I, I can listen to Dark Side of the Moon ten times through and cry through all of it, and it's you know it's overwhelming. Um, but at the same time, like it, it depends on it depends on what I'm trying to achieve, because I'm because it's not like I'm doing it for fun. Because I always get anxious, and it's always like, okay, this could be a rough one tonight. Because because sometimes it is. Sometimes it takes yeah. you to a place that you you might be hiding from you or, should be scared before you mm -hmm. do this i mean people say they're yeah. scared before an ayahuasca ceremony i'm like you should be scared yeah I mean, but know? that's part of the respect and yeah. that's 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 the most important thing it's just it's the approach to it it's the respect so so like my weekend being dedicated to it so my saturday i like cleanse myself and i make sure my body's clean and, and empty and, and open ready ready for the uh you know and, I, and then I, I get five grams and grind it up and mix it into orange juice like nice organic fresh orange juice and then 30 minutes later it's like it's, it's starting to, starting you're, to speak. You're to quite me. open about this stuff, and, and but you're still uh, a UFC fighter and a, a UFC representative. I mean, you know, you're going to be doing TV and things like that for them. Is that a, a conscious decision you made? Or look, I am going to be out of the psychedelic closet? I, I just don't... Uh, 
we were actually talking about this earlier in Camden. I don't, I don't see the point in, in being closed with anything because my intention, is, my intention with life is to have as much ex experience as possible, to connect with as many people as possible. So, like, like if I hadn't have, have said, oh, yeah, I went to Peru and had ayahuasca, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys. Mm. So, you know, unless someone comes and takes me away and locks me up, I don't really see any reason why not to be. And, and all, all, all I'm saying then is I'll, I'll talk about it and tell everybody about it and you just got to come and fetch me if they, if they lock me up. That's my deal. So I don't mind talking about it. It's not, you know, as Terence said, if you hide your stash, you're doing the man's work for him, you know? <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not doing the man's you know, work for we him. We had uh, Rick Doblin sitting there who, who runs MAPS, which is, uh, you know, a foundation started in 86 that's been trying to get uh, MDMA legal for, you know, PTSD sufferers and stuff. And that's the last bit of advice he gave is like, you know, if everyone just came out of the closet mm -hmm. and told your coworker that I do this and it's okay mm -hmm. and everything, and that was the one thing he said yeah. more than politicians or anything. Yeah. So. It, the, problem, the problem is we have to work so hard right now. It's just like mixed martial arts. We had to work so hard in the beginning to, to establish some kind of respect for it, some kind of acceptance, you know, because it was kind of out, out of the mainstream and people weren't sure about it and there was blood and, you know. And, and it's the same, the same with this. Like psilocybin, and I always try and say psilocybin or mushrooms. I, I, don't, I don't use magic mushrooms. I hate or, that phrase. Yeah. I hate that phrase. But the, pro the problem <laughs> is, like, you say magic mushrooms and everyone thinks, oh, they, you know, they you, giggle. You, you down it with a beer and, and, go, and go and have a laugh. And, and it's, it's, it's to be respected. It's a medicine and there's a process to it, you know? So, like, as, so as I was saying, so, like, like, as it's starting to wind down, then I'm get, I've got my notepad out and I'm drawing and writing and making as, m as many notes as I can while it's still fresh in my mind. And then I'll go and meditate and that will take me very much back into that space again until five, six in the morning when the sun's starting to come up. And then I like to do kettlebells or uh -huh. go and run a trail. Because uh -huh. at this point, you've, you know, at this point it's starting to wind down. So, you, so you're about the same, you, you, you're about as, as altered as you would be if you had, you know, a couple of grams, gram and a half. So by the time I'm, I'm, I'm out at the trail that I want to run. I'm like, I'm right where I need to be to, to run this trail and feel like, you know, the Hulk. <laughs> it's, re it's really weird because I like, you know, I run up the trail and I'm, I've got my music playing and, and I, I go through different phases of listening to stuff that's really heavy. Like, uh, I like Meshuggah. They're very like, mm, like heavy, like they're a Swedish metal band and okay. it's, like, it's like math metal. So it's like really weird beats and stuff and it just kind of, it's just constant. It keeps me going. Um, and, and again, Future Primitive is, is, is a good one to use. A Massive Attack. I never thought I would run to Massive mm. Attack, but I use that quite a bit now. And then like binaural beats, they're quite good. It's just like a, well, you can get different types that, that communicate with different brain waves. But uh, yeah, that, that kind of stuff's very good. Just, just to keep, just to sh it's just one more thing I can shut out is, is, the, is the noise from the outside, the birds and, and, and the people talking and stuff. And, and I just get down this trail at like, at full speed and sometimes I eat shit and that's that's part of the fun but <laughs> but I, I can feel very I'm, I feel so aware and so connected I know where my feet where my foot's going next and I know that when it lands there the kind of stability that it's got and it's and it, there's much more of a presence there than I experience normally which I don't I don't get that connectedness in any other experience other than um well I, I never got that that connectedness before I had these experiences and now I'm aware of it I can I can do it to a certain extent, but not to the same extent as I could if I did have some in my system, for sure. And how often are you doing these things? Is it very infrequently, or does it depend? Um, it varies. I've been jumping around quite a bit recently. I've, I've, it's been like kind of ayahuasca, San Pedro, psilocybin, psilocybin, ayahuasca, just kind of back and forth, but at least once a month. Do you think you get okay. desensitized to it? No. Your tolerance grows to, towards it? Uh, with psilocybin, there is a tolerance, which is, I don't know exactly, I don't know the science behind it, but I know it's about a week. Um, but out of respect, I wouldn't do it back to back anyway, which is, which is why I'm kind of on the fence about DMT, which would be another good thing to talk about. Yeah. Because it is synthesized, it goes through a process. There's no, you don't earn it like you do ayahuasca. Interesting. You know I, mean? I found the DMT to be a, I call it the crack cocaine of psychedelics, which is a horrible thing to say, but <laughs> I, I, was, I was up and back down, but I yeah. didn't have any deep, meaningful lessons of yeah. things I needed to change in my life. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was shown something and then I was back. So I honestly wasn't, wasn't rushing back to it mm -hmm. because I didn't feel like I had to do that pain and do that hard work. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, 
with ayahuasca, there's, there's an understanding of the process that comes with it. So, you know, the, the ayahuasca diet, you know, which is very, very restrictive. If, if you stick to it it's hard. As, as, they, as they want you to, it's, it, is, it is a very restrictive diet. Um, and, then, and then there's the ceremonial aspect of it, which, and I don't like all the paraphernalia that comes with it, I'll be honest, because you, and you see this quite consistently in ceremonies, and, and particularly Westerners gravitate towards the paraphernalia, all like the, the Quechua and stuff and the Peruvian, and, and they've got like, like, like a blanket in front of them with all kinds of trinkets and crystals and sage and, you know, just piled on top. And, and, I, and I, it, doesn't, it doesn't annoy me. I mean, it's, it's to, to each their own, but I do feel like that kind of makes a little bit of a religion out of it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but the actual ceremonial aspect itself and, and the process of, you know, the the Akaros singing, um and, and the shaman coming around working on different people and, and the ceremonies I've been doing recently, there have been, you know, two, sometimes three or four people that go around and work with different people in the group. Because i 'cause I've been because I've been in like very concentrated like ayahuasca groups and they're like, you know, there's like, you know, apprentices and, and it's 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 a very, very cool network and everyone's helping each other. Whereas with Peru, it was the shaman and the people that were, right. you know, that were the patients, effectively. So you could have multiple people coming over yeah. and working on you, and yeah. you like and you like that. I, I did like that because everyone offers something different. I mean, there was a guy, there was a guy in one of them that just plays the didgeridoo, and it was awesome. Hmm. I mean, like as soon as he started playing that didgeridoo, I was it took me to an entirely different place, and it was it was really really energizing, and and as soon as he stopped, it was it was like I kind of sat up and started to look for where. It, Look, to, look for where the sound had gone. I know that sounds stupid, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You kind of like, you know, especially because the room's pitch black, you can't see a thing. But the, like, the, sorry, the ceremonial aspect of it is important. The the respect that that you have to give the plant, you know. Um, we, we talked about it with with Graham Hancock, and he he thinks there's a very strong link between religion and psychedelics. Yeah. And the experience that you get is a religious one, even if you don't believe in sort of traditional yeah. views of gods. Yeah. But you see, so like. When somebody says religion, that is like saying Walmart. You know what I mean? Like, like Catholicism is Asda. It, because, because basically what they've done is they've, they've taken what they think people want and they've packaged it in a way that's accessible. So you can go and get your fix once a week at church and you can be nice to those people for those two hours and then you can yell at them from your car the next day. You know what I mean? And there's no, like, there's no real integration with religion. Whereas with it's a spiritual experience, like like, but for, but for me spirituality is a personal journey anyway, so I don't need to go to the same building once a week and speak to the same people once a week and read the same book as those people to get this because that might not be right for me, but but everyone's kind of told that that's what's right to do, so that's what they do. Well, so Terence always said uh, that the beauty of it is that it was an experience and it yeah. was a pure that way. Yeah. And so no one can tell you that this is you just have it mm. and it's yours and personal. Exactly. And if you go through most of the, you know, I mean Graham Hancock's the best person to talk to about this. Um, but if you go through like like most of the religious books and ancient cultures and stuff, th there's there's a heavy presence of of what could potentially be psychedelics. I mean, in any any environment, and and every culture's got their own their own altering substance you know yeah unfortunately in the western world we 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 gravitate to alcohol nicotine and caffeine which which really don't don't do a great deal for you well alcohol certainly and nothing constructive really. no no exactly i mean caffeine can be used as, as a good training tool if you if you're using yeah. it right but a starbucks a day is not going to help you at all and you know you might enjoy it, but other than that, it's not going to elevate you in any way. Where, whereas, you know, you go to South America and there's ayahuasca and salvia and mushrooms and, you know, and, and there's, there's iboga and numerous amounts of it. And, and then, you know, you go out way out to the, to the, to the uh, you know, the Far East and they're doing the same kind of things with like, you know, self-flagellation and meditation and fasting and, you know, vision quests. This is another thing that people don't talk about a lot. I read a book called uh, Grandfather by uh, Tom Brown Jr., and it was about a Native American medicine man that kind of taught him his the skills that he had, all of the survival skills, and and some of the stories about this guy like like going on vision quests where he's like wandering for three weeks with no clothes or anything. What is a vision quest? It's it's basically it's basically just a kind of isolation. You just kind of you you just you you basically cast out of your of your your tribal group. You you sent away into the wilderness to to survive to fend for yourself. 
Um, occasionally, that occasionally you'll have something to keep you warm. Occasionally, you would have a knife, but but the hardcore way of doing it is just to wander out into the in, into the desert with your bare ass and figure it out. It's like, it's like Batman Begins. Yeah, exactly. They train, and, they, they train shamans that way a little bit yeah. in in Peru with the young ones that just like go. Yeah. And you come back for some ayahuasca and yeah. then go. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and give them little doses every day and leave them on their own as well and, and plant dietas. That's another thing that, that uh, again, see, there, there's so much to this culture. It's, it's not just like, you know, magic mushrooms and DMT. There's like a whole wealth of stuff that's all connected. And like the plant dietas where you, you, you would diet a plant for a month, two months, three months. And this is like being on the ayahuasca diet for a prolonged period of time, you know, no sugar, no salt, no sex, no spice, no... No fun, no, you know, none, none of the stuff that people kind of reach for to make them comfortable. Yeah. Um, and then, and at the same time, you would focus on one particular plant, and you would, you would, you would in integrate that into your diet with the hopes of taking on the lessons from that plant. And and if you think of the variety and nature of of plants that we've got, there must be so many more, uh, you know, psychedelic uh, plants out there, and so many plants that you could just integrate into your diet that you would glean something from. You know, even if it's just just like marijuana, and it and it just helps you, helps you be nice to people for the day. Yeah, but, you, you know? talked about how that some people say it's a it's a female energy, and so is ayahuasca, and they don't combine. Mm -hmm. um, do you agree or do you disagree? Well, this this was something that kept coming up for me because um, I don't ever like to feel like I'm doing something because I want to do it, solely because I want to do it. I don't, I don't eat Chinese food because it doesn't do anything for me other than the fact that I like to eat it until I've finished it and I regret it. <laughs> so I don't want to be the guy that, 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 that smokes marijuana because he likes to smoke it. I want to smoke it because, because it's, a, it's a medicine and I have that respect for it. And, and people get away from, from this quite a lot with, with, with all kinds of teacher plants. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's listening to your inner guardian and knowing when when he's right to say i don't need it right now Bill graham hancock said yeah. he, he was basically abusing it for 24 years yeah but was you, so will you not eat a chocolate bar i don't i don't but will you not have sex oh i would have sex yeah. but that's the same thing isn't it but that's but that's it's not no because because sex one is a very organic thing and two is a good way of connecting to that euphoric space that you get from psychedelics and connecting to the reptilian brain so there's there's a there's a lot going on during sex. So it's not just for pure enjoyment. No. You think you learn something from yeah. it as well? Yeah, for, for sure, for sure. If right. if it's with the right person, anyway. Back to marijuana really quick, and then I'm gonna start talking wolves. <laughs> okay. So uh, so you think marijuana should be something that's taken seriously and used as a plant teacher, as yeah. opposed to just self medicating? Yeah. Um, it's very big in the U.S. now. I think we I, yeah. we don't have a good. Like, what was it? Some fighter tested positive, and he was like, everyone smokes weed in California. Yeah. You know, is that true? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's very widespread. I, I felt really bad for Pat Healy. He, was, he beat me right oh. early on in my career. He, um, he, he won $150,000 of bonuses. Oh, yeah. And, then, it, it and then he failed his test, and he had to give it back. And you've got yeah. to think, 150 grand to a yeah. guy that's just, you know, I don't know how many fights in he in, but yeah. maybe he's earning 15 and 15 or something like that. That's so yeah. much money. He deserved that money as well because he's, yeah. been, he's been at it for a long time. But the thing is, the, the most frustrating thing is that, you know, like a week or two later, then they adjusted the, the limits. So then he wouldn't have tested positive. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I know they've adjusted them recently from 50 to 150 of whatever unit it is. Does that bother you or do you just kind of say that's just the way it is right now and I have to work within those guidelines when it comes to, you know, state it's, commissions and stuff like that. It, it, it is, it is what it is. You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a part of the UFC because I have to be, I'm there because I want to be. And there's, there's a set of rules that are laid out to be a part of that. And I choose to, to abide by those rules. And I understand that there's, you know, there, there are drug testing, whether I agree with it or not is beside the point because I'm choosing to be in that environment. I accept what, what's, uh, you know, what's on the table. Um, and, but, and with marijuana, you just try to, to treat it as a teacher and, and respect yeah, it. Yeah. And this, and going back to the ayahuasca thing, the, the, the ayahuasca diet, whatever's written on it is not necessarily written, f written for everybody. It's not, you know, like, like, uh, you know, Lacey does a lot of yoga and, and her, her experience with, with ayahuasca is that if she doesn't keep some salt in her diet, she, she's dehydrated all the time. And then obviously that, if that affects the experience. So it, it's got to be adaptable, but you've, you've, got to, you've got to be honest with yourself. 
you've got to be like, I need salt because I need salt, not I need salt because these chips are kind of bland. You know what I mean? Mm. That's, that's the yeah. difference. It's not, it's not what you do, it's the intention. And my intention is not to smoke marijuana because I want to smoke it. My intention after a ceremony is to smoke it because it helps me put all the pieces into place. And how long have you walked this path? You were never like a Nottingham lad that would go to the pub and get in fights and then go and eat bad food or? I did, I did for a couple of years in my teens, yeah. Because I stopped drinking at, uh, j just before I turned 18. Um, so it's 13 years now. Um, so I, had, I, I kind of had two years where I did that, like 15 to 17. I just kind of put my foot on the, on the gas and just went nuts and, you know. And you made a conscious decision to stop? Yeah, it just... Because of your career? It wasn't suiting me. I was making bad decisions because, because alcohol tends to bring out the reptile in everybody. And makes, like, it's the ultimate bad decision maker. Yeah, is, it is. is alcohol. Yeah. But that's the reptilian brain. He's the bad decision maker. The one you want to get closer to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he can make the right decisions in certain situations. Yeah, well, he's very useful. He's very, very useful in some circumstances. <laughs> in critical, crucial situations. Yeah. But I've got, to, I've got to know when to listen to him and when to not. Yeah, when to know? turn him on, yeah. when to turn him off. Yeah, All right. Well, exactly. like, you were down in Peru, and I remember you, you saw like a spirit animal, and it was almost like a premonition because it was a wolf. Kind of weird, right? If you like alternative history, which is what I do, then expect everything that you say to be turned over forensically, very, very closely, uh, by large numbers of hostile academics. <laughs> 